Hello and welcome to the AA Guide on buying an EV in Ireland. Now it's a really tricky topic, it's all new isn't it? It used to be just petrol and diesel miles per gallon, these days it's kilowatts, kilowatt hours. It's tricky to get your head around. So if you are thinking about buying an EV, if you're curious about it, if you think your next car might be an EV, then this is the series for you. Today we want to talk all about charging. How do you charge an EV? What happens when you charge it? Can you use the public network or private or how do you charge it at home? We want to cover everything all the way from the cost to how long it takes to how fast each car is and how do you pick the car that's right for you in terms of charging. Take a moment, enjoy the calm. You could be stuck on the N7 with two teething toddlers, but we don't do stress at the AA. We do roadside rescue and our trained mechanics fix eight out of 10 problems at the roadside. Buy online now at the aa.ie. Relax, yellow and black have got your back. But before we hit the road and start looking at charges and talking about prices and what's the right car for you, we gotta cover the basics. And there's two main things that I wanna talk to you about now. We're gonna wrap this up in about, well, one minute or less, so stick with me. But if you feel like you already know it, obviously skip forward and get the information that you want. So the first thing that I wanna go through is the difference between a kilowatt and a kilowatt hour and what they are. And it's very, very important. It's a bit like mixing up petrol and diesel or miles per gallon and the capacity of your tank. You kind of do need to know the difference to follow along with the rest of, of the video. So a kilowatt is a measurement of power. And on the other hand, a kilowatt hour is a measure of energy. So let's give you a real world example using this car that I have here today. This is the Polestar 2, the long range dual motor. Now, power in the car, we used in the old days to talk about horsepower. In electric cars, we say that this has 300 kilowatts of power. Now the equivalent of that is just over 400 horsepower. So it's quite, packs a punch this car. So the power output of this car is 300 kilowatts. That's the energy coming out of the battery, going through the wheels and driving the car forward. Then when we charge it up, we're obviously putting power back into the battery. And we also talk about those charging speeds in kilowatts. On the other hand, let's now talk about kilowatt hours, and that's energy. So we're talking about a car like this. There's a certain amount of energy in the battery that we use to power the car, to move it forward and the heating and all that. And this car here has a 78 kilowatt hour battery. So that means that there's 78 units of energy in the car that we can use to drive it and so forth. And it's quite important that we get our heads around that difference. So kilowatts is power, that's your charging speed or how much power the car can put out. Kilowatt hours is the amount of energy that's in the battery. Then another thing that I wanna to talk to you about is AC DC. And no, we're not talking about rock music. It's alternating current and direct current. So the energy that's in the battery of this car is stored in direct current. But your house, all the appliances that you use at home, the grid, the electricity that's going through it is on AC or alternating current. Now, we don't need to get into the details of that, but the reason that we need to know it is because when we go to talk about chargers, there's two main different types, let's say. There's the AC chargers, which are a lot slower in general, and the DC fast chargers, which are a lot faster in general. So when you're charging at home, you're gonna be doing it on AC. Some of the slower chargers that you see at supermarkets and car parks, they're also on AC. Then what we really wanna know about is that fast charging that we do on you know, motorways as you're going from Belfast to Dublin or from Galway to Limerick, something like that. They're the DC chargers, direct current. And that's where the energy just goes straight into the battery at a really, really fast pace. So now that we've covered off those two terms, because we're going to be using them a lot, we can start talking about all the different charges that we'll come across and how you choose the right charger for you. So pretty much the slowest way of charging your EV is what they call a granny cable. It's a really, really slow charger that can go into your three pin socket. Now, a lot of cars have a frunk like this Polestar 2 here, which is a great way to actually store these cables. So 
This is our granny cable here. And as you can see, it has a traditional three pin socket the same way you would a mobile phone charger or a kettle or something like that. So because this is a three pin socket, it can just go into any domestic socket that you'll find at home or in your garage or maybe at your office building or something like that. Now, we don't recommend these, although some people have used them extensively. What you really want to get is a home charger, a dedicated unit. But these do help you out when you're in a little bit of trouble. So what we can do is leave one end just there. We could take this three pin socket pass it through the window of this house there and into a socket that's on the wall inside where we are now actually has an external three pin socket as well so just to show you here we go that's one end in there we open up the charge flap just here take your type 2 so the connection here that goes into the car and now we are drawing power from inside the house and it's going into the battery. It's very, very slow. So typically because houses in Ireland are about 230 volts, this will be quite slow. So we're looking at charging at a rate of about two to two and a half kilowatts, pretty much the same as your average domestic kettle will draw. So in the case of a car like this, that's got over 70 kilowatt hours of a battery capacity, you're looking at in and around 30 to 35 hours to go from zero to 100%. It's very, very slow, but it helps a lot of people out when you're in a bit of trouble or you're staying over at a friend's house or something like that. So we've brought the car to another public charger point. This one is the ESB network, and this is an AC charger capable of going up to 22 kilowatts. So let's grab the cables from the front here and go and have a closer look. So this AC unit is capable of putting out 22 kilowatts. But the car that we have here today, the Polestar 2, is only capable of taking 11 kilowatts on AC. To use these points, you take the cables, you always bring these ones with you yourself. You keep them in the boot, or in our case, in the front there. And just like with the granny cable, you have your type two connection on the end, but instead of your three pin socket, what we do is we take this end here and we plug that into the charger. So let's go ahead and do that now and show you how the whole process works. We can use our phone to activate this on an, the app, of course, or what we'll do today, because I have the card right here in my pocket, is activate it with this. The great thing about these particular units here, these 22 AC posts, is that there's two charging points on them. So we're plugged into the B side here at the moment, but there's also the A side, and it can actually charge the two cars at the same time. In the case of the Polestar, it can max out and give everything that this car can take. Now, the unit that we're plugged into is giving us 11 kilowatts. Our battery is just over 75 kilowatts. So we're looking at a charge that would take from zero all the way up to 100 of about seven to eight hours. But in today's case, you might only want a top up. Let's say you're going to meet your friend for lunch down the road. Uh, you're gonna be about an hour and a half to two hours by the time you get back to your car. In that space, you've put about a third of your battery in, which is a good solid 100 to 150 kilometers range in a car like this. Another thing to note with these kind of chargers is that they're three phase. So when we were at home on the domestic chargers, the granny cable was giving us two to two and a half kilowatts, and then your domestic home charger was giving you maybe seven to seven and a half kilowatts. But they're single phase electricity. These units are three phase electricity, and that's why you can get a lot more power out of them with the likes of the Renault Zoe being able to take 22 kilowatts on these kind of units. This unit that we've come to here is a fast charger. This one is on the ESB network, as you can see, and it's a fast charge point, something that we're, we're touching on here today. So this machine can put out up to 50 kilowatts and it's DC, it's a DC charger. So the way you work these things is you can use the app, of course, or what you can do is use the card that you get with it. So we simply just tap that against the machine there. It recognizes our account. We choose CCS, which is the connector that we use for this particular car. The other one, Nissan Leafs in general. So we take it out, open up the charge flap. Plug it in like that, and it takes a few seconds just to initialize and start off the charge. And we can see that happening here. 
on the screen once we press start. So a couple of other things to note at a unit like this one, because there's various different types out there. We're using the CCS plug, and this one also has the Chatamo plug, but that's for a different type of car. Now, these are both DC plugs, and you cannot use them at the same time. It's really just a choice of connectors. But this machine does have an AC socket on the side here. Now, that's a lot slower. It's only gonna go up to a maximum, in this case here, of about seven and a half kilowatts. But for somebody who's leaving their car for a few hours, or going off to do their shopping in town or something like that, that's absolutely perfect, because you're just looking for a top up, and this one is for when you need a faster charge to get back on the road in a few minutes time. When it comes to choosing your EV, one of the factors that might really, really weigh on people is charging it. How am I gonna charge it? Now, we've come to this particular site for one reason, and I wanna show you what is just behind me here, and that's a bank of Tesla superchargers. There's eight here, only one is in use. So seven stalls are free. So if you turn up with a Tesla at really any of their sites around the country, you're most likely gonna get a charge at any given time, or maybe with a very, very small queue, the odd time, it's a seamless experience. In contrast with that bank of Tesla superchargers where seven out of eight stalls are free, over my shoulder here, we've got two cars plugged into the one unit. One is getting the full charge on DC, the other one is taking a much slower AC charge, and there's a further two cars there queuing up to get on that same unit. So we've gone through what you do on the public charging network and all the various parts that go with that, and we have a look at how you charge at home, but there's a few exceptional circumstances. So this is just your traditional domestic charger. There are tens of them on the market. This particular one is a Rolex EV charger by wall pod and in general they're going to be putting out about that seven kilowatt mark from a domestic home a domestic residence like this so in a car like the Polestar that has a battery capacity of 78 kilowatt hours it's going to take about 11 or 12 hours to go from completely empty up to fully charged and that's what someone is probably going to do overnight as they sleep or just top up whenever they need it because the great thing with these kind of units is you can program the car or the charger to charge whenever you want. So the person that owns this particular unit here could say that, well, look, I've got a night rate and I've got between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. I get extremely cheap electricity, something like, let's say, 10 or 12 cents a kilowatt hour. So they just program the car to top up only between that very, very small window and it might give them, you know, 50 or 100 kilometers of range per night but that's enough to do them as they get through the week. They don't need to charge up to 100, so why would you pay twice, three, even five or six times the amount for electricity that you don't need in your battery? Like we've seen a few times already today, take one end, that goes into the charger, and the other end into the car. So this unit that he has here, it's capable of putting about, out about six and a half to seven kilowatts. But the great thing about this car in particular is that we can reduce the amperage of the car. So it's really only pulling about one and a half kilowatts at the moment. And I've done that for a very particular reason. Because above me here, he's got seven solar panels on his roof. They're 300 watts each, which means it can put out a peak of 2.1 kilowatts. Now, here we are kind of middle towards the end of November, actually. It is a, quite a bright day. There's no clouds at the moment and the sun is shining on them. And they're actually producing about 1.6 kilowatts. Now, I know this is all the technical stuff, but we've explained that already in more details and other videos, so we can watch that. But stick with me here. So his house is actually drawing, you know, the fridge, uh, the lights in the kitchen, maybe a laptop or a TV or something like that, drawing about a half a kilowatt, which means he's got a kilowatt spare that was just going back to the grid for free. Bye-bye, he's getting nothing out of it. But because we've got the car plugged in, drawing a low amount means that the car is currently charging up on completely free electricity as he's just sitting inside, working away, charging up the car for free off solar energy. So when it comes to charging, if you are thinking about going EV, what you need to do is just stop and have a think about the kind of driving that you do. And that's crucial. That's gonna inform the type of EV that you should buy. So think about how many kilometers you do a year. What, what's your average week like? In general, do you just do 200 kilometers a week on average and then maybe two weeks a year, you might do a long trip down the countryside. Then what you wanna focus is on what suits you for that was 50 of the 52 weeks of a year. But if you're somebody who does, you know, not that much driving, but then maybe twice a month, they go from Dublin to Kerry to visit family or something like that, then having the ability to DC charge on the way is probably a little bit more important to them. 
So what you gotta really do is think about your kind of driving and then after that, find the car that suits you. We really hope that you enjoyed today's video, that you got something out of it, that you learned something. This is only one part of a series all about buying an EV in Ireland and the guide that goes with it. More information up on the AA website as well. So stay tuned. If you have any other particular questions, just check on our YouTube channel because we might have that covered for you in another video.